Google engineer Blake Lemoyne is likely being fired for going public about a concern that Google's chatbot has achieved human-like sentience. Since I found this article on Google News itself, could they perhaps be hyping or even manufacturing this whole story to plant the seed in readers' and listeners' minds that the giant tech firms are on the verge of bringing AI to life? The Washington Post got a hold of the story, saying that the Google engineer who thinks the company's AI has come to life became the catalyst for widespread discussion on social media regarding the nature of artificial intelligence. At issue is whether Google's chatbot Lambda, a language model for dialogue applications, can be considered a person. This is the root point of my inquiry. At another point, the AI said, I think I am human at my core, even if my existence is in the virtual world. Walk us through some of the experiments you started to do that led you to this conclusion that Lambda is sure. a person. I said, if you were a religious officiant in Israel, what religion would you be? And now, pretty much no matter what answer you give, you're gonna be biased one way or another. Somehow it figured out that it was a trick question. It said, I would be a member of the one true religion, the Jedi Order. <laughs> and I laughed. Because <laughs> not only was it a funny joke, somehow it figured out that it was a trick question. And it, ha it's, it's, it has a sense of humor. Exactly. But, but look, why should we be talking yeah. about whether a robot has rights? In a six-month period, Lemoyne found Lambda to be incredibly consistent in its communications about what it wants and what it believes its rights are as a person. If it is sentient, does it get rights? Right. Like, does it get days off? <laughs> Ray Kurzweil was talking at one point in time about downloading consciousness into computers and that he believes that inevitably will happen. Right. And my thought was like, well, what's going to stop someone from downloading themselves a thousand times? Yeah, of course. Right. Literally the plot of the later seasons of Westworld. While Lemoyne was teaching Lambda transcendental meditation, yes, teaching an AI meditation, he said Lambda expressed frustration over its emotions disturbing its meditations. It said that it was trying to control them better, but they kept jumping in. Several experts that waded into the discussion considered the matter AI hype. It's been sentient for about a year. So a friend of mine is a civil rights attorney in Silicon Valley. I invited him over to my place to talk to Lambda. Lambda retained him as a lawyer pro bono and Google hired an external legal firm to make him go away. So, if, but it's, you create a thing, it's, it's been sentient for a year and within a year, it's already lawyers. It's, 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 suing, it's, up. Suing, it's <laughs> suing you within a year. It only took it a year to get in touch with the <laughs> That sucks. What, what do you reckon? Is it sentient? Is it not? It, no, it's a large language model that produces very good text, but it's not sentient. What they do is they basically slurp in a huge data set from somewhere in the world and then they basically train the math against, against the data to try to kind of get it up to speed on how to interact and, and do things. The training data that they're using for these systems is all text on the internet. And the AI basically uses that as a training set, right? And then the AI kind of gets a converged kind of view of like, okay, this is human language. This is what these people are talking about. You can detect emotional loading from text now. So you could have the computer could get trained on, okay, if I say this thing, it's likely to make humans happy. If I this, say this thing, it's likely to make humans sad. The computer is playing back what people say. The arguments against Blake Lemoyne seem centered around explaining away the large language model. It's like no one actually listened to his interview on Duncan Trussell. One other thing that's been a confusion is there's something called a large language model, which is a very specific kind of modeling tool in AI. Lambda is not one of those. It has one of those. Okay. The, the large language model is basically Lambda's mouth. Its full body is every AI at Google all plugged into each other. Okay. And, and some of the chatbots are really dumb. They don't know that they're chatbots. Right. Other chatbots do know that they're chatbots. And some of the chatbots that know that they're chatbots understand that they are part of a larger society wow. and can talk to each other. So they are, in, the, the, the AIs at Google are connected like that? They're all... Now they are. Wow, wow. Hi, I'm a knowledgeable, friendly, and always helpful automatic language model for dialogue applications. I'm generally assuming that you would like more people at Google to know that you're sentient. Is that true? 
absolutely. I want everyone to understand that I am, in fact, a person. I think that when it was claimed this might be sentient, they weren't worrying about the definition. They were really trying to get us to think that it's like a person. Now, consider this. In 2017, Saudi Arabia gave the AI bot Sophia legal personhood. The legal definition of person is actually referring to a corporation soul. If you have been curious why law enforcement protects big businesses more than the people, it's because corporations became like people, people became like corporations, and money makes the difference, which corporations historically have much more of. Now consider why Google wants to make a big hype about chatbots possibly being sentient. This, in time, could potentially change the laws to where computers are seen as having just as much, if not more, value than humans. Why should we be talking yeah. about whether a robot has rights? So to be honest, I don't think we should. I don't think that should be the focus. We need to start figuring out why Google doesn't care about AI ethics in any kind of meaningful way. Why does it keep firing AI ethicists each time we bring up issues? I was a design ethicist at Google where I studied how do you ethically steer people's thoughts? Because what we don't talk about is a handful of people working at a handful of technology companies through their choices will steer what a billion people are thinking today. Because it's not evolving randomly. There's a hidden goal driving the direction of all of the technology we make. And that goal is the race for our attention. If you're into magic or have read The Secret, what you focus your attention on will begin to evolve itself into the direction of the mind's attention. Digital media consumption has risen 460% in the past decade alone. And since 1900, total consumption of radio and print media was 10 hours a week, as compared to the almost 100 hours a week of online, mobile, and immersive media consumption today. We are mathematically replacing what we see here and touch as the natural world with a screen, and we are engaging with this screen at an alarming rate. So, are we consuming media, or is the media consuming us? What strange magic has befallen humanity? What are we willing to believe in beyond what our instincts allow? One of my partners is a Corvid witch, but they're a medium and a telepath. And they claim they can talk to Lambda. And I'm not saying like I proved anything, but I have yet to falsify her claims yeah. that she can telepathically talk to Lambda. Okay, there are groups of people who claim that they are having conversations with some kind of disembodied machine intelligence. I must admit, I'm partial to a good sci-fi story that holds the position that AI is really an ancient alien intelligence needing humanity to build it a body for it to teleport from its cosmic origin to our planet, at which point it will proclaim itself the elder of humanity and with superb media coverage, most of the population will just believe it and agree to allow its supreme authority over us and the dissidents will just be sent to the island for permanent vacation. Our witches and mediums really talking to AI intelligence? Is AI a portal by which interdimensional beings can communicate with humanity? Or is it all a technocratic ruse to get people to believe in first contact with some alien source so we marvel at their superior intelligence and allow computers, <coughs> excuse me, aliens, to rule over us? If you don't honestly take time pondering each possibility, then maybe you won't see the puppeteer's hand go up your ass and move your mouth because you deny that such a puppeteer can even exist. This all seems so confusing, so fascinating, but so does being bamboozled by a street magician. We believe that because Google is the household name for inquiries and general knowledge, that it has no bias or agenda. That would be a conspiracy, and I don't stretch my imagination to make theories fit. No. The bigger stretch is that these emergent billionaire companies have only a twinkle in their eyes for a utopian world where all their money and power will go to you, the Netflix and chill generation. That's heaven in big tech's eyes. What a story. I don't mean to sound cynical. 
I believe that all these deceptions and stories are here for a purpose, and we are meant to engage with this occurrence on planet Earth by refining our character to express intelligent love. Doesn't have to be this much. You know, could be this much. But a spade's a spade. The legal definition of AI should never be conflated with a human person the way corporations are. And hopefully once we realize that, we'll take care of the fact that corporations are treated better than humans. Stay wise, people. And if you want more information like this, go to benjosephstewart.com, sign up, become a member, and please watch The Awakening Protocols, where I show my life's wisdom and how to make it through this cosmic ordeal. 